in the last lesson, we graphed, we looked at trigonometric functions and how to graph our basic trigonometric functions. So what does the, what do the graphs of sine theta, cosine theta, and tan theta look like if we're using the y coordinate as what's the output for that function? We found that all of these functions are what we call periodic. So for a periodic function, Um, we are going to have a repeating pattern of some, for, some sort. And periodic functions don't necessarily have to be smooth, but sine, cosine, and tangent, tangent all have their own period. So we call the period of a periodic function how much it is to get through one full, how long it takes to get through one full cycle. So period is the length of one full cycle. And for sine, sine and cosine, our basic period is two pi. And for tan theta, our basic period is pi. So tan theta repeats a little bit more frequently. So now that we can grab the basic thing, what we're of course gonna be doing is applying what we've already learned about transformations. Okay, so we actually have special names for these transformations in when we're talking about trigonometric functions. I'm actually going to move this down because I can tell already we're going to need a little bit more room before we get to that problem. Okay, so with transformations. So as I mentioned when we're doing the transformations unit, there are very few functions where a there's a big distinction between the, a vertical expansion or compression or a horizontal expansion or compression. Trig functions are the exceptions to this. So tan doesn't matter quite as much, but sine and cosine it is really, really going to change the look of the, of the graph when you do a vertical expansion or compression versus a horizontal expansion or compression. Okay, so the way we write our trig function, we have y equals a, and we actually use very specific letters, and we do capitalize a, not quite sure why, times b bracket x minus c plus d. And the same would be for a cosine graph. Just the sine and cosine graph are starting in a slightly different place. Sine kind of starts in the midline, at the midline, and cosine starts at the maximum value. Okay, so our A is our vertical expansion or compression, compression or expansion with a possible reflection in the x-axis. Okay, our B here is our horizontal expansion or compression with a possible reflection in y-axis. And the if reflection in the y-axis here, again, is not going to actually do that much because it really is just sort of a reorienting where things start. So the tricky thing about sine, cosine, and tangent is often you could read a certain transformation as a different one. So if I reflect something in the y-axis, I could also read that as a horizontal translation to a point where we're going in the opposite direction. And we can take a look at that a little bit in class on Desmos. Um, our C here, this is our horizontal translation. But again, horizontal translation actually turns out to be the hardest thing to find when we're looking at sine, cosine, and tangent graphs particularly, because when we're translating horizontally, there are often many different ways we could do that. Because if you translate, if you have a basic sine theta and you translate it horizontally by two pi, you actually have the same graph back again. So sometimes you could read it as translating a certain amount or it could have been a different amount. So sometimes there are multiple right answers because these things repeat themselves. So generally, I try to get you to do the most efficient way of writing your horizontal translation. And here we have a vertical translation, that's D. And so 
there are, when we're looking at graphing these things and what we really want to be graphing, we don't necessarily want to be plugging in a hundred and a half points. Um, so we're going to, we're going to name these new things, these things a little bit differently. So we're going to call A is our amplitude, okay, from this graph. C, we normally would call that our horizontal translation, but we're actually going to call it our phase shift because we're shifting it. Um, but we're not necessarily, it's not necessarily a well-defined horizontal translation because it's really just shifting where the phase, where going through one, one little block starts and ends, okay? So B, our horizontal expansion and compression. When we compress and expand horizontally, what we find is that we're actually going to change how, how long it takes to get through a full cycle. So if we're compressing horizontally, we're going to get through a full cycle much faster. And if we expand horizontally, we're going to get through a full cycle much slower. So we're going to be finding, um, we can use our B to find the period. So B is not equal to the period, but we use B to find the period. And the way that we find it is that the period equals 2 pi divided by whatever b or our um, factor of horizontal translation of, sorry, horizontal expansion or compression is going to be. So that's how we find our, the period of our um, transformed trigonometric function, okay? If it's for tangent, it would be pi over b because that's our original period. So just whatever the original period is divided by your b. Okay, so when we're looking at a trig function, we've got, let's say we've got like a sine or a cosine. So it's been transformed. So we've got this thing going here. So there's a few things we want to be looking for. We want to be looking for the midline. Okay, so this is the midline. Okay, and so the midline is going to be equal to the maximum plus the minimum divided by two. So this is the highest value of y divided plus the smallest value of y divided by two. The amplitude is right here. So the amplitude is the measure or our, which is the same as our vertical expansion or compression factor, is going to be the distance between the midline and the highest or the lowest point. It should be the same no matter where you measure it. So if the midline really is truly in the middle, your amplitude is going to be the same whether you're measuring it up and down or side to, or whether on a, you're measuring it down or whether you're measuring it up from the midline. Okay, and we can find the amplitude. It's actually the difference between the max and the min. The maximum y, the highest y minus the, the lowest y, and then divided by two. And you're talking about your trig graphs. And the thing that can be a little tricky, it's really important to find out where that midline is because our right here, this is going to be our d is going to be the distance that the midline has been moved. You don't want to try to measure your vertical translation by looking at the top and the bottom because it may have actually been stretched or expanded. So the midline, because we're doing our amplitude expansions around the midline, the midline is going to stay on the same scale. So we really want to do our measurement of our vertical translation using the midline. The irony here is that it's actually relatively easy to work out your for sine and cosine Unlike everything else we've graphed with transformations, it's actually relatively easy to work out what your expansion and compression factors are, um, whereas it is relatively challenging <laughs> to work out what your translations are, um, whereas with almost every other um, function from what I've seen, people are pretty good at picking up what the translation is, but the expansions and compressions can be a bit more of a challenge. So there's often more than one way we can write these things. And to further complicate it, you can always write these as either a sine or a cosine, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take a look at how, 
we would be graphing a trigonometric, we're going to look at graphing a trigonometric function, and then we're also going to look at how to write down the equation. So let's actually start with writing down the equation, because that problem seems to pop up. So you're given this, so example one, okay, we are going to find all relevant values and write the equation of the trig function pictured as a sine and b cosine. So we could write it as a sine graph and we could write it as a cosine graph. So I'm actually going to look at doing both. Okay. So let's start by finding where our midline is. If you're given a graph, so I see we go all the way up to six here. This is my max y. Okay. And then I go all the way down to, what is this? This is five, one, two, three, four, one, two. So negative, it goes between six and negative two. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to work out where my midline is and where my, okay. So midline is going to be y equals the max y plus min y over 2. So it's going to be 6 plus minus 2 divided by 2. So that is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And I can kind of see that in the graph. That makes sense as being my midline. <coughs> so the midline is actually at y equals 2. That's where my middle line is. Okay, so when I know what the midline is, I know if what the what my d is going to be. So I know that d is going to be equal to two. My vertical trans that we've been translated vertically by two. So I've worked out one of the four things I need to do to be able to write down this equation. Okay, next let's measure the amplitude. I can do it using the graph or I can do it algebraically. So if I use the graph, <coughs> I can measure here from six down to two, so it's one, two, three, four. Um, so the amplitude is four. Or I can do six minus minus two divided by two, which also gives me four. So either way, the amplitude is four. So I know A equals four. Now I've worked out two of the four things I need to do. Now I need to work out what my B is. So what's my expansion or compression factor? horizontally. So let's check out. Um, so in order to do that, I can't easily tell what my expansion or my compression factor is, but I can tell what my period is. So if you look here, I'm going to look at this as a sine for the moment. So if I look at it as a sine graph, I go through one full period from the midline. Notice I'm measuring from the midline, not from zero. So I go all the way from zero to two. It's one full period. So my period is two. So I'm going to try to work out what b is. So b is, so my period is 2 pi over b. So 2 equals 2 pi divided by b. So if I multiply both sides by 2 and then divide by 2, I work out that b has to equal pi. Okay? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 things. Now, I have to find my phase shift. So what I have to do in order to find my phase shift, like how far it's been shifted, is I have to look at sine where my starting point is for sine. So it's good to remember that we have sine. The way that sine starts, this is, our, this is on our y-axis. Sine starts at the midline. And there's really four points you're looking for. So sine starts at the midline, so it goes up, middle, Middle up, middle down, middle. And don't worry, we are going to stand up and I'm going to make you do this with your hands. So that's what one period of sine looks like starting from zero. So what we're looking at is where does this going up middle point go to horizontally? So we're going to pick any going up middle point and figure out where it's been translated. The annoying thing is you could look left, you could look right, you could look center. There's, it doesn't matter whether you look left or right. There's an answer where you go left and there's an answer where you go right and they're both technically correct. Cosine, our starting point is the up point. So it's up, middle, then down, middle, 
is how one period of cosine starting from y equals, that's with our, sorry, our x equals zero. x equals zero and x equals zero. So we have to look, usually with cosine, we're looking at where our top point has been shifted to as opposed to where one of our midpoints has been shifted to. So now let's look back up here and we're gonna try to write this using an equation for sine and cosine, okay? Let's start with sine first. So what I notice is that this actually is starting on a mid going up. So as a sine, it hasn't actually been translated at all. Or I could say, well, maybe it was translated left to, or I could say it was translated right to. Either way, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna leave it in the simplest possible solution. So y equals four, that's my amplitude. So remember, we're using y equals a sine b bracket x minus c plus d. So y equals 4 sine, my b is pi, times x. Well, we don't actually have an x minus c. I'm actually going to write the x without brackets because some people are getting confused about when those brackets mean multiplication and when they mean input to a function. So here the input to the function is pi x. Okay, there's no, there's no need for a c here. And my d is 2. So 4 sine pi x plus 2. Now we're going to look at cosine. Okay, so when I look at my phase shift, I think about where does regular cosine start? Regular cosine starts at a high point. So how far shifted over is my high point? So this is one, this is halfway. The nice thing to know is that all of your points here, these important points, are evenly spaced. So this is one quarter of your period. Each of these distances between the points is one evenly divided into one quarter of your period. So this is your whole period. So each is one, two, three, four equal divisions. And that corresponds with your four quadrants. Ha, it all comes together. Awesome. Okay, so we're going, one period is two. So we're going a quarter of the period, which is going to be, we're going one half to the right, or we're going left by one and a half. And I'm going to choose to go to the right one half, which make this, makes this y equals four cosine of pi bracket x minus one half. So I'm subtracting one half to go right. My pi stays outside in brackets because we always have to write our b factored out if we want to do our translation after we do our scale factor, which is what we do want to do. And then we're going to add two. And so that gives us how, what the equation of that graph is by looking at it. So generally, here's the order in which I'd work. Find your midline, find your amplitude, find your period. And then once you've got all of that information in, go looking for what your phase shift is. And if you're asked to write a sign, you're looking at where that upward going middle point has shifted to, to the left or right. If you're going for cosine, you're looking at where that maximum point has been shifted from the y-axis to the left or to the right. Okay, let's do one graph and we're not gonna do it in huge detail. So our second example is what if you have to draw a graph? OMG. The funny thing is that we're actually looking for similar information. So graph y equals negative 2 sine of 1 third x minus pi over 2. Let's do plus 1. Oh wow, we've got a lot going. So what we're going to do when we try to graph this is we're going to be looking at what do we want to what do we want to figure out? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out everything that we did before. So let's start with our midline. Midline y equals one because that's what my d is. So I'm going to draw in my midline. So this is going to be y equals one. Okay, and generally we're looking to sketch at least one or two full periods. My amplitude. So my amplitude, I'm going to say is 2. There's a negative here, but what that means is that we're just going to be starting backwards. So my amplitude is 2 with a reflection. I might just jot that down in y, in x-axis. y direction, x-axis. 
told you how easy that is to get mixed up. Okay, my period, let's calculate the period because that's gonna be important. So period is two pi over B. For here, B is equal to one third. So this is two pi over one third, which equals six pi. So we actually have a longer period here. We're gonna be, instead of going through our middle up, middle down, middle in two pi, we're gonna go through it over six pi, okay? And my phase shift is pi over two. So we're gonna be moving pi over two to the right from wherever we started out. And you may actually, sometimes with the graphing, I find it's easier to graph everything without the phase shift and then try to graph in the phase shift. Okay, <clears throat> so let's figure out where my starting point is, okay? So with sine, I'd be starting here, right? I'd start at a middle point. So sine is my middle up, middle down, middle. I have a phase shift of pi over two to the right. So I'm gonna be actually moving pi over two to the right. Okay, so we're gonna be starting at pi over two. I'm gonna make this pretty close actually. So I'm gonna label pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. And one of the really important things that you really need to figure out is what's a quarter? Remember I said you move on to another one of your points every quarter of a period. So what's my one quarter of a period? Because that's, that's sort of my counting. I'm going to go midline where I'm going to go to my maximum, then my, back to my midline, then to my minimum. So a quarter of the period is 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. So I'm gonna be every three pi over two, I'm gonna be moving to a new point. So I've got my pi over two, two pi is the next place I'm gonna be moving. So I'm gonna be labeling every pi over, two. each of my little things is gonna be pi over two. So I've got two pi, three pi, then four pi, and then five pi, and then six pi. I'm gonna go to, we've got like a little negative pi, negative pi just in case I need it, negative two pi, okay? So this is my, what I call my step. It doesn't have an actual official name, but that's, that's where you're gonna be stepping from one point to another. Okay, so starting point, where my zero point moved to, that's just my vertical, that's just translations. So I have, I'm gonna be starting here at pi over two and y equals one, that's on the midline, okay? so. Pi over two, y equals one is my starting point. Now the question is, where am I gonna go? So my amplitude is two, so that means my maximum value is gonna be three, and my minimum value is gonna be negative one, because I'm gonna be moving two up from that midline, two down. Now I have to take into account the fact that we have this reflection in the x-axis. So what that does is that gonna, that's gonna flip my minimums and my maximums. So usually sign would go, we would go middle up, middle down, middle. So I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna go middle. My next point that I'm gonna graph in is gonna be a down, and that's gonna be here at two pi because my step, remember, is three pi over two. So I'm gonna go down, middle. Now I have to go three, three more of these little steps. One, two, three. That's gonna be another middle. I'm gonna go one, two, three. That's gonna be up. I'm gonna go one, two, I guess I can add another one. Three, that's gonna be back to the middle. So now I can sketch in, and you wanna do like a nice rounded sketch for your curve up here, over here, and around here, okay? And that is a sketch of one period. I could also keep going, so I'd go back one, two, three. That would be an up. Point. And so then I could keep going here, and then I would go back one, two, three, and that would be a middle. And remember, I'm figuring out that I'm counting three of these because each of my steps here that I've drawn in my graph is pi over two, and I'm counting to three pi over two. So that's actually a really, it's really good to calculate what the step is before you actually label your graph because then you know what the distance needs to be between your sort of important points. And the only really important points we're thinking about is where the ups, the middles, and the downs are in this um, trigonometric graph.